Well, hey there folks, welcome back once again to The Hop House. It's Eddie here, uh, and it's time for the last beer review from my left field beer hall. Uh, we're second week in March, it's taken me uh, a bit of time to get through them all. Uh, so welcome along to The Hop House, let's do this. If you just found us here on YouTube, uh, we're called The Hop House, we like hoppy people like house music. If you like either of those or both, give us one of those, give us a like, share, subscribe to this channel. Okay, um, real treat time again for me, and it's the final beer that I haven't yet reviewed. In the beer hall I did get two cans of certain beers, so those second cans I'll have in my own time. Um, but everything else I've reviewed, this is the last one. I'm hoping I've saved the best for last. Um, the last two beers I just did were pretty damn good, so I'm hoping this is gonna knock me socks off and make me dance around the kitchen. Do you want to see what we're gonna review? So it's from Cloudwater, and it's not from Tesco. It's from actual Cloudwater. This was the most expensive beer in the beer hall. I think it was about five seventy-five, five pound seventy-five a can. The previous beer that's down there that I just did, the double dry hopped pale from Cloudwater was five fifty. Um, these are not cans that were in the reduced section. These have got well within their dates. So from Cloudwater, it's an IPA, and it's this one. It's called, you're probably not going to pick it up there, Morning Mist at Fog Lane Park. It's a smooth and juicy IPA featuring a trio of citrusy hops and it's 6% ABV in a 440 milliliter can. There is your design. It's a foggy morning. Foggy Morning Mist at Fog Lane Park. No idea where that's supposed to be, if that's somewhere in Manchester. Cloudwater are based in Manchester. So this has not been brewed at Brewdog by Tesco. This we brewed in Manchester by Cloudwater. Should we get it out into the glass? First ever IPA from Cloudwater. It's taken me some time to get there. But like I say, um we have um been going over a year and the majority of stuff I get is from supermarkets. So this is tick boxing, this is treat beer for me. Look at that. Look at that, eh? It's dark orange, white head on it, cloudy, hazy, really fluffy white head. Um, it's darker than custard. It is, yeah, it's a dark orangey colour, burnt orange, um, bordering on amber. It holds up in the camera really well. That's the true reflection of the colour that I'm seeing through my eyes. There you go. This is my glass that I got from um, Card Factory, by the way. It's got a H on for the Hop House. I couldn't find one with an E on for Eddie. So I thought, I'll get one. I'll take one for the team. I'll get one for the channel. So there you go. Uh, there's a tiny little bit left in, in the can. See if we can pour it in. Just gonna see if there's any sediment. I don't think you'd see it anyway. So obviously it's been it's not been filtered or fined. Um it's cloudy, it's hazy. Oh, and it wobbles like a good one. I can see the head, the bubbles chasing the bottom of the head. Obviously, I'm not gonna do all that with it just yet. Do all that. Get involved. Because then um, it'll just go all over the floor. So we'll go for some aroma. And then once I've, I've had a bit, then we'll jig it around and give it a bit of laser vision. So I know there's people out there that love the lacing, so stay tuned for laser vision. Right, let's go for some aroma. It's aroma time. I'm going to put that in there. We're going to give it a whiff. See what we can sniff. I'm getting mango, orange, peach. Say it's citrusy. Bit sweeter than citrusy I'm picking up on the aroma. Getting a bit of earthiness as well. Probably got Simcoe in it. I mean, every beer's got Simcoe in it. No blue cheese though. Mango, yeah, it certainly tastes more tropical than downright citrusy. Taste, sorry, smells. I haven't tasted it yet. 
maybe a little bit there's lemon and lime there I'd give it lemon and lime but there's no pithiness it's not grapefruit and noir bits of mango bits of peach bits of orange lemon and lime and a bit of earthiness bit of earthy dankness Smells, smells lovely. Should we, should we, should we just delve in there? My first ever cloud water IPA. Box ticked. Excuse me. Right, bottoms up, down the hatch. Let's do this, people. amazing right bit of laser vision let's get it out of the way and then i come through some flavors so this glass is quite cold so try and jig it around best i can jig 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 i can definitely see the bubbles chasing the bottom of the head so i'm hoping you can pick it up on camera Those are all the lacing. Right, flavour wise, well, first of all, body, soft as you like carbonation, similar to the last beer that we had. Yes, I get it now, I see what all the fuss is about cloud water, how soft the carbonation is. I get how some of the beer, craft beer connoisseurs are really putting this, putting this beer on a pedal still, putting it up in the clouds, if you like. Um, oh, it's really earthy now. Really, uh, it's got to have scent going. Soft carbonation, medium to thick body, some lovely sweetness down the middle of the tongue and down the sides. Down, oh, down the sides you're getting, you're getting grapefruit, you're getting mango, you're getting passion fruit. I'd say there's some passion fruit in there as well. Passion fruit, grapefruit, mango, lemon and lime. Definitely lime at the back end and that earthiness, which is why I think it's got Simcoe in it. Some of you that can, let's see if it's got Simcoe in it. I'm intrigued. It says a trio of citrusy hops. Uh, ripe with elegant, freshly squeezed fruit character, this IPA blends a trio of hops that combine to provide bright citrus aromatics, beautifully balanced by floral notes and fresh pine. I said I got pine, floral, I said it was a bit earthy. Um, does it actually tell us what the actual hops are? Oh man, it doesn't tell us. I think it's got Simcoe in it. This is a trio of citrusy hops. What does that say there? Morning Mist at Fog Lane Park. Uh, it tells us the units. How many calories are in it? Oh, per 100 millilitres. Jeepers. Um, oh, it tells the they've got an address in France. That's nice. And then the, Man the Cloudwater address in Manchester. Doesn't tell us the hops. Maybe I should go and have a look at it online. Go and have a look. Morning mist at Fog Lane Park. It's a beauty. Right, what I'm going to do, and I was I was debating whether or not to do this. So, I'm going to grade this now, and then I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So, I've already drank quite a bit out of the beer. Um, Flavour-wise, it's stunning. The body is the best bit about it, though. And I love how it's, the dry, double dry hot pail was really quite tart and that was more citrusy than this. This has got some sweetness down the middle of the top. It's really nicely balanced. Um, I get it. Cloud water IPA. I get it. I get it. Is it worth £5.75? 
There's certainly a lot of effort gone into it. There's certainly some beautiful aspects to the beer. It is a stunning beer. But I don't think I'd regularly pay that much for a can of beer. I just wouldn't. I'm more on a budget than that. It was nice to have as a treat. Right, rating wise, it's getting four limbs. It's getting two thumbs up and two feet back. Sorted. It's four, limb, four limbs out of four for the beer. Right, so that's the end of the beer review. So if you, if you want to stop watching, you can do. Now, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but I, want, I wanted to do that on its own before doing it side-by-side -side and starting to get flavours mixed up. So, as I say, we've got this Fog Lane Park jobby, uh, Morning Mist at Fog Lane Park. And now I'm putting into the mix. Yes, I'm going there. I don't care. I'm going there. It's the Cloudwater Tesco IPA. He says it's soft and juicy and it's also 6%. Right, so let's get this out into a glass and we'll compare them. Go compare! Probably get sued now for that. Uh, I'm going to use a Mrs. Gin glass because it's the only one I can grab to at hand that's... My vocation one needs washing. And there's others in the cupboard that don't fit the whole glass in and I was a bit like, no, I want to fit the whole glass in. Can't be bothered pouring and re-pouring. I'm just trying to do a quick comparison here. So, ignore the red tint at the bottom of the glass, but you probably know that by now. That looks a bit lighter and a bit more custardy in colour. Let's have a look. Let's put it together. Jig that about a bit just to get the head reformed. What do we think? What do we think, Maestro? Actually, no, they're both the same sort of shade. I give them both the Jews, they're both the same sort of shade. Now what Cloudwater is supposed to be well known for is the is the yeast that they use. It's called Cloudwater yeast. So I don't know whether they've got somewhere that produces it specifically for them. Um, but bearing in mind that that was brewed, all the you are about that's brewed at Brewdog, it's a Brewdog beer. Um, Colour-wise, identical to me. So colour-wise, not an issue. Right. Aroma, it's, well we've been through it haven't we, it's citrusy, it's tropical, mango, orange, bit of peach and a bit of earthiness. Right, aroma on this then, not picking up much. I'm not, you know. I've had this a few times and thought the aroma was quite strong on it. Oh God, I just over poured that onto my hand and onto the floor. Only a couple of drops. There's only a couple of drops left in the can. Let's see if there's any more left in the can. A little bit more, there you go. Be a bit more careful, not on the over pour. Um, Yeah, I'm not picking up much on the aroma on that at all. It's a bit disappointing. I've had it before and I've really liked it. Probably my favourite of the core Tesco cloud water beers. So appearance wise, they're both very similar, both very hazy, both look the same colour. That is kicking ass on aroma over that. Right. Taste wise, we'll go with the real cloud water first of all. Sweet down the middle of the tongue. I've been through the whole thing on the review. It's beautiful. Right, Tesco Cloud Water. See, now I've got down a bit and jigged it. Get more of an aroma. Yeah. It's not as punchy, nowhere near as punchy. Still tasty though. Trying to get some aroma out of it. Oh, there it is. Orangey. It's got that brew dog smell though. That. 
how do you, how do you explain the Brewdog smile? There's other beer reviewers that have said it. I know Simon on Real World Craft Beer, he went on about it, and I thought he was having a laugh. And then I'm like, yeah, it's, um, it's almost like a burnt, slight burnt orangey, copper, burnt rusty nail smell. Tiny. It's not overly metallic, it's not dreadful, it's just, it's got a bit of a whiff about it. And you're a bit like, that's brew dog. And I don't know, it's got to be something to do with the, their conditions of brewing. Is it to do with the equipment that they use, the, the boil kettles, the fermenters, is it the water? Is it something they put in the water to maybe soften it? I don't know how harsh the water is up in Scotland. Manchester water is probably pretty good, because it's not far from Yorkshire. Yorkshire water is... The best in my opinion. Uh, Peak District is really good. I'm not sure about Scottish water. If anyone's watching from Scotland, they can tell me, is your water? Like, I live in Telford in Shropshire. Water is really limey. You've got to descale the kettle once a month, um, sometimes more, depends on how much we boil the kettle. Uh, you've got to descale things like the iron as well. So it's quite harsh water around here. Seven Trent water. But up in Yorkshire, when I lived up, up, at, up at Wakey with my mum, never had that problem. So, water quality has something to do with it, but... It's definitely got that brood on smell. Whereas that hasn't. That's, that's jumping out the glass, nearly. I'll give it that. For... For the body on it, it's still stunning. Lovely, soft carbonation, slightly thinner body than the other brew dogs, slightly, but I'll give it its dues. You know, it's 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 trying. It's trying. Now I'm getting more aroma out of it. It's like a fainter version of this. Right, that's like way. Now I'm definitely getting, now it's warmed up a bit. The earthiness is coming through. It definitely smells like it's Simcoe. Whereas that's a bit more peachy, peachy creamy. That wins on flavour. I still don't mind that at all. It's just the smell that's a bit brew doggy, but the taste is lovely. Um, so I just wanted to do that quick comparison just to set my mind straight because, of course, prior to these last two videos, I've not had a proper cloud water beer. And everyone said, you know, when you have a crowd water beer, it'll, it'll be crap compared to the Tesco stuff. So that's why I thought, right, I'll do a side by side. So got the review out of the way, did a side by side, and hold my hands up. Yes, people were correct. The proper cloud water is better. Appearance-wise, they look sort of identical to me, so it doesn't win any, any points on that. But on aroma, on flavour, probably a bit on mouthfeel as well. Although the Tesco Cloud Water Brew Doggy Jobber is pretty good on the mouthfeel. Um, not bad on the taste either. But that comes up a cropper. So yeah, the the real cloud water wins. Probably no shock to anyone out there watching. Um, come to 20 minutes. So I think I'm kind of done now. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to like, share, subscribe, feel free to do so. And we'll see you for some more beer reviews in the future. Like I said, I've got the Buxton stuff to do. I've got some vocation. I want to do a set of sour beers. I want to do some more local beers and get out and about to some local pubs. All sorts of stuff gonna go on in the channel and I'm just starting to decorate the house as well, so may have to put a halt on it for a bit, but we'll see. Thank you very much for watching, like, share, subscribe. Ciao for now, people.